XPath. It's a way to specify a bunch of nodes in a tree that you want to work with, exactly the right nodes that you want to work with. Um, <clears throat> and we've seen it before already. If you have some big tree, uh, we saw using a for each loop, and we talked about for each uh, slash ancient wonder slash wonder, and there were seven of those. Um, when we had the for, when we were looping through things, we were looping through one particular wonder, and we talked about uh, you know XSL colon value of name and that grabbed the the name of that particular one since we were relative to a specific wonder. Okay, so it's an easy way to you can have a big complicated tree. Uh, it's an easy way to specify the nodes that you want. The first thing to remember is that. XPath uh, specifications return a node set, okay? So a bunch of nodes, like with we saw with a for each. Now, by the way, um, XSL colon value of, like grab the name attribute, that doesn't want a node set, that just wants one particular node, right? Um, it's up to you to make sure that the thing you give to XSL colon value of really is a set of size one. If, uh, it's a set with many things inside of it. Value of can go ahead and choose any of them and work with it, and they'd still be within their rights. Now, in practice, they probably choose the very first one consistently, but in my mindset as a programmer is, if I goof up and give them a value of a node set that contains seven nodes, if I say XSL colon value of slash ancient wonders slash wonder slash name, well, there might be seven names or some wonders had more than one name, so it might be 10 names. Uh, yeah, that value of might return any of those 10 names. Um, okay, so uh, XPaths uh, is a way to specify entire node sets, okay? Um, okay, uh, I should mention, by the way, uh, uh, let's give just uh, an example. Uh, I'm gonna look at this here, uh, page Wonders of the World with a table. We already saw that. Except this one now has a history, has a bunch of paragraphs, uh, one for each particular um, wonder. Okay, so how did we actually get that? What was the code that yielded that? Let's look at the All Wonders XSL. Um, we see this XML file, Wonders of the World, a table. We saw that table, it's when it had a for each, for each row, and we sorted them. That was that table part. Then we have an H2 history, and here's a uh, for each selection, and it goes for each ancient wonder slash wonder slash history. There are seven of those. And we go ahead and have seven paragraphs corresponding to that. Um, one thing I'll mention is this, this is a for each loop. As we're doing the for each loop, we're within a particular history node that's inside a wonder, that's inside ancient wonders. Um, our select statement might go ahead and do something like this. Go ahead and value of select is dot dot slash name. Okay, so this is going up uh, one level, dot dot, going up one level in tree, just like a Unix path, and then grabbing the name that's above us. Uh, and again, the way, picture here is of looking at the history and we're trying to get to the name. Yeah, we might go up one and then down to grab the name. So, okay. Um, so, that's one good thing to know about uh, XPath is that it borrows dot dot, and we'll see a few other things um, from Unix paths. Another thing it grabs from Unix paths is the, uh, the, the notion, uh, easy enough, a relative path versus an absolute path. So I'll mention this just because it's good to always be aware of it, and if you're not aware of it, you get yourself in big trouble, just like you can with Unix file names. So exact same thing. Uh, if your file name or XPath starts with a slash, you are starting from the root, okay? And working down from the, doesn't matter what your current node is. You might be in a for each loop, you know, going through uh, individual things somewhere else deep down in the tree, slash starts from the root of the tree. Okay, if you don't start with a slash, you're a relative path. Uh, and that means you can't really tell what you're talking about unless you know which node you're currently looking at, what you're currently working on, your current node. So um, just be aware, both in 
Unix whenever you're typing a file name and an XPath. Is this going to be a relative path or not? Okay. Um, now I'll just sort of mention here's the little uh, egghead uh, digression for the moment. Technically in XPath there are seven different types of nodes. There's three that we actually will use a lot and we've already seen them. Uh, element nodes, that's the uh, a tag, okay? So it's a node with a bunch of children, perhaps. Um, there are attribute nodes. So in unlike the DOM, in XPath, uh, attributes are considered their own nodes. Uh, they're weird kind of nodes. There's only, they don't have any children, and there's sort of two pieces of information to them. Um, but yeah, so attribute nodes are, again, nodes. We can have node sets that return attribute nodes. I've actually seen that with the at name. Um, and then text nodes. Uh, text nodes are actually just the plain text at the very leaf of this XML tree. And we can go ahead and grab that text and work with that. We've seen that as well. Okay, so uh, those are all different types of nodes. Technically, there are some other types, okay? There's uh, namespace nodes are technically nodes, okay? I don't worry about that. Processing instruction nodes is uh, less than question mark PHP is a processing instruction. Less than question mark um, XML can be a processing instruction. Um, so comment nodes, technically another type of node that you can actually grab in your XPath and, and talk about it. Um, we're not going to do any of that. Um, the root node, that's a interesting, just a, if you run into it, you might need to remember this and then read about how to work with it. Um, in XML, you need, must have one tag that embodies the rest of the entire file, like HTML. Everything has to be inside HTML. Um, and that's true in any XML document. Uh, in addition to that node, that element, there's just slash by itself, which is just above that one element. And that's a, its own root node. So usually I, I don't really care about distinguishing those two. Every now and then with XPath, you might need to talk about one and not the other. Okay, so um, just be aware that there are those differences. Okay, uh, what sort of things can we do with XPath? Uh, there's interesting dot, just another name for your current context. Dot dot refers to the parent of the current node. Um, star will go ahead and talk about all the children of the current node, okay? We can go ahead and talk about at, we saw using at name earlier, uh, and that's the, we just grabs the attribute of the current node, okay? The one with the specified name, okay? Uh, so at language we used before. Okay, grabs the language attribute. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and grab all the attributes of a node. Um, and um, there's a few other weird things Slash slash, that's a something special that doesn't correspond to Unix. Slash slash talks about all the children from that node onward, um, from the current node onward. Um, and that's a little bit weird. It's like, yeah, all the children, like all flatten to be, you know, one big long list that contains all the other nodes, no matter how deep they were. So, okay. Um, and you can actually go ahead and if you want, you can say slash slash and then an element name that grabs all the elements in the entire document. Okay, so that's kind of kind of interesting. Okay, um, we'll see an example of that in a second. Um, I want to go back and talk about the square brackets because this is probably the most interesting thing uh, about XPath is that you can filter a node set. If you have a node set, you've made some selection, you've grabbed a node set, uh, and then you want to narrow it down. You're like, yeah, I have 20 nodes here, but I'm only interested in those that meet some other criterion. I want to maybe end up winnowing it down to five. That's what square brackets are for. So uh, ancient wonder, we've seen before, ancient wonder slash wonder slash name square bracket. That was actually, you know, this part of the expression, ancient wonders matched one node, one element. Uh, this matched seven elements. This matched maybe about 10 elements altogether. And then we filter them down since, uh, and I think that brought us back to seven since in our particular database, every wonder had a an English name in it. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead and and use 
brackets to filter. They don't need to be used just like that, okay? So uh, here's another thing we might do. Uh, I can talk about ancient wonders slash wonder slash name, okay? And then I can go ahead and say, hey, I want to filter out just the Greek names. So at this point, you know, ancient wonders, wonder name, I had about seven things. With the square brackets being Greek, I've winnowed that down to about five, okay? About five uh, names that meet that criterion. So at this point, uh, we still are sitting at, we have a bunch of name nodes, but they've been filtered down to those that have uh, a Greek attribute. Um, and then go inside there and grab the history and then grab the date built, if that was another field inside there. So this will go ahead and give us seven date built elements um, with this expression here. So the filtering doesn't need to happen at the end. It can happen anywhere. You can have multiple filters in a row or different places. Um, so you work left to right, and when you hit the square brackets, you just use that condition to filter out your node set and make it smaller. So, Okay. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'll let you think about how do we make an XPath expression to find all wonder nodes which have both a Greek and an English name. So you need to have a Greek name and an English name. How do you do that? Ah. Well, you're going to pause for a second, think about it, give it a good think. Yeah, and then after, yeah, as after your good think, it was pretty clear, maybe uh, ancient wonder slash wonder slash name. This filtered me down to uh, everything that had a Greek, if I want to make sure it has an English as well, then I can do another filter right after. And I can something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, how would I do uh, a filter that has a Greek uh, or English name? Uh, that's going to be a little bit, there isn't a nice way to do that just with filter. We'll need to actually use an or operator that we'll talk about in the next video. Okay. Um, I mentioned this weird, uh, if you're at a current node and then you say slash slash, you get all the children. Uh, and if you follow that with another element name, you get all of those. So here's an interesting little uh, example. Uh, we'll go uh, look at this. Here's a page that uh, has the Colossus of Rhodes, a nice picture, and the Pyramid of Giza. So we just have the pictures of all the different things. The XML that gives rise to that, or sorry, the XSL that gives rise to that, uh, how do we grab all the pictures in there? It was kind of interesting. Uh, we had a loop, and we selected uh, all nodes, all children of all nodes, uh, and then go ahead and grab all the file attributes. So it turns out uh, within uh, a wonder, one of the things was a file tag, sorry, a file attribute, okay, um, and again, I'm going to go back and show that, that picture that's in the notes, that now becomes pretty necessary, um, oh, except the file's not in here, oh, the file attribute, sorry, is sitting, um, actually, let's go and look at the actual show source and see where the file, so, there's a file within a main image, and that main image is part of the wonder, okay? So, gosh, yeah. Um, how do we go ahead and uh, process all those? We went and grabbed every file attribute, whether it was in a main image or not, we grabbed the file attribute. So if there was a main image, if there was a secondary image, we grabbed it as well. If there was a uh, any other thing, we we grab that. Now it turns out this file uh, in this input XML, the only file attributes in occurred inside a main image tag. But um, okay, so we're currently inside, you know, the when we do this for each, we're actually inside the attribute node. So going up one will bring you to the main image tag, and then from there you can go up to the uh, get all the way up two more levels to the wonder tag. Okay, so, uh, sorry, just one, oh, sorry. Once you're here, go up one more level 
at one additional level to get to the wonder tag. So, and then what did we do for every file attribute? We said v, and then we went up to the wonder tag, then we went back down to the name, grabbed the English name, colon, then we made an image, and now we have to do this xsl colon attribute dance to get stuff. Uh, and we went ahead and grabbed select equal dot. What is that? dot grab, oh, we're sitting at the file attribute, right? So that actually grabs the file, which is what we want to use for the href, so. Um, okay, uh, and that's what went ahead and gave us, there we are, this file here. Okay, so that's sort of a more fancy use, you can go off and study that more fancy use of the dot and dot dot and grabbing an image tag and this I don't like this slash slash at file okay that's just sort of a that seems like the wrong because I might be grabbing if I ever change my grammar files might occur at other levels it might be that dot 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 slash dot dot doesn't get me up to a wonder element and then things get really goofed up so I don't I really I'm not a fan of it but it helps you understand how it's all working okay so that is uh, some more general comments about XPath. XPath, I'm actually uh, think is more important to know than the X details of XSLT. XPath you'll use in many other libraries or Java libraries that let you use XPath to specify things. Uh, if you're taking the software testing class that we have, I think they in there they use XPath to help provide specs of what they want a correct web page to have um, for their tests. So. Uh, we'll come back next time and see how we can add extra functions onto XPath specs to do additional work. And that's going to be kind of, uh, kind of fun.